I mean, are, you, are you optimistic or pessimistic about the future? I, I'm cautiously pe- pessimistic. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> How's that? Uh, I'm, I'm worried, quite worried. I mean, look at this two-tiered system of justice. You've got Donald Trump. Let's just take the January 6th indictment. He's being indicted because essentially his lawyers made the argument that the vice president has more than ceremonial duties on the first week following an election. The same argument Democrats make at, made after 2000 when they tried to decertify Florida, same argument Democrats made after 2004 when they tried to decertify Ohio. There were 30 House uh, Democrats plus Barbara Boxer, including Benny Thompson, the chair of the January 6th Insurrection Committee, hmm. all joining to decertify Ohio because they argued that the Debold voting machine had been tampered with. Where have we heard that before? 2016, they challenged more states than Donald Trump did after 2020. Nobody accused them of being election deniers. Nobody prosecuted them. And their lawyers were not facing disbarment. This is just madness. And it seems to me, where's the ACLU when you need them? Where's the, where's the left? And, and, and this Hunter Biden, Joe Biden stuff... Uh, Woodward Bernstein, I'm young enough to remember that, in the, in the 70s, they, they went nuts over Nixon. Richard Nixon. And Nixon didn't do it for, for, for greed. Uh, he was trying to cover up the um, break-in of, of Watergate because he had a bunch of, uh, a bunch of his aides who got involved in that. And Daniel Ellsberg, psychiatrist. Right. Minor uh, things. And, and, These weren't and, huge. And uh, Woodward, Woodward uh, it's still there. He's still at the Washington Post. He's an executive there. And, our, and Carl Bernstein is still around. Where are these guys? Nobody seems to care. It, it, I'm... I'm I'm blown away where the country is right now. I really am. Half the country believes the other, other half is evil. No, you're absolutely right. And young people, when I say young people, if you're in college right now, you probably don't remember the 2000 election because that's 23 years ago. So if you're a 22-year-old college student right now, you probably don't even remember 2000. Gore pushed that case to the U.S. Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. So you want to talk about election denier. It took us, was it 12 or 13 weeks to actually like determine that. the election, and it had to get to the U.S. Supreme Court, and it wasn't Bush pushing that. And, and Tom, talk about election denying. Hillary referred <laughs> to Donald Trump for the entirety of his presidency as illegitimate, her word, not mine. Said the election was stolen, her word, not mine. Jay Johnson is Obama's DHS secretary, testified under oath that while the Russians tried, they failed to change a single vote tally in 2016. Two-thirds of Democrats believe, according to a YouGov poll, that the Russians, quote, changed vote tallies, close quote, to elect Donald Trump. Zero evidence to change any. A greater percentage of Democrats believe 2016 was stolen than we feel that way by 2020. Nobody calls them election deniers. Yeah. And he, all, it's all, such a double standard. Yeah, and all Hillary and the DNC got was like $170,000 slap on the wrist for the whole Russian collusion yeah. well, dossier. Well, well, whole H- Hillary and the DNC paid for the Steele dossier, yeah. and the FEC, FEC fined them yeah. uh, because they characterized it as a legal expense. Exactly. Donald Trump characterized the Stormy Daniel thing as a legal expense. He's facing criminal charges by the, <laughs> by the Manhattan DA. Yeah. It's outrageous. What do you, you think is going to end up happening on Trump? Nothing. Okay. So I, th- I think he's going to get... I think he's probably going to get nominated. Uh, if he gets nominated, he'll get elected, and he'll pardon himself. But wait a minute. You also said that Larry Elder on Trump, uh, you said this a few months ago. I'm not sure he's electable. You said he's nominatable, but he's not electable. So your position's changing in three months. I feel more strongly now that he can win because of the, what they've done to him uh, with, the, uh, with all these indictments. So it's changed in three months. I just feel more strongly. Um, Look, he, he was a great president. The economy was rocking and rolling. Uh, the, the borders has never been more secure. We got all the judges that we wanted up there. Uh, built, built the wall. Uh, we're oil and gas independent. Uh, he was a great president, and he'll hopefully put those policies back into place when he comes back. Yeah. I feel more strongly now than I did before. How will he pivot to the center? You know, they fam- I think Nixon was famously said that, you know, you run to the right, and then you pivot to the center. Same with the d- yeah. Democrats, right. you run to the left. Right. So I, I fully agree that Trump is going to be the nominee. And I also, despite popular opinion, I think Sleepy Joe is also going to be the guy. I think we're going to see what happens during that debate. I, I, think, I think he will, will be the guy. If he can fog up a mirror, he'll be the guy. And, I if, agree. and if he's not, it'll be Kamala so, Harris. So when, oh, God forbid. No, no, um, no. I mean, I, I don't know why people feel that somehow somebody else is going to sneak in like that. Even Gavin Newsom just the other day said, yeah. uh, I'm not going to run in 2024. Uh, Kamala Harris is, uh, is next in line. And I've been saying that for months. He played coy because, mm-hmm. look, the strongest part of the Democratic base are black voters. And even more strong are black female voters. And they love Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. And they feel that uh, when we make fun of her cackle, it's both sexist and racist. Mm-hmm. They feel that Joe Biden's given her thankless tasks like getting to the bottom of, of uh, illegal immigration. Uh, they feel she's been mistreated. Mm-hmm. And if she is perceived as having been dropkicked for a white dude like 
Gavin Newsom or Mayor Pete. Mm -hmm. Black women won't vote Republican. They just won't vote, thereby guaranteeing whoever our nominee is, he or she will win. So they can't afford to do that. And Gavin Newsom knows that. That's why he never never announced. But let's stay on Trump because I think okay. Kamala is a non-factor. But that's my opinion. All right, I know what you just said. But How can she be a non-factor? If, if, if Joe Biden can get across the finish line, as soon as he gets across the finish line, he hands over the baton to her. And she could run. I just don't think she's electable. But I want to stay on Trump, okay. if you don't mind. Um, so w when he's going to pivot to the center. They're stuck, they're stuck with her. That, that's I, my I point. don't think yeah. you understand what do you, you, you understand what he's saying. Right? I understand I'm completely. Saying that, yeah. He's but saying the, he's going to win. Then he's going to give it to her so she can stay for eight and years. One, one more. Well, that's it's what not he's an saying. anointment. Like yeah, it's it's going to be an election. One, one more. Holy. No, but yeah. what he's saying is Biden's going to win. Then hand it over. This is important about the gender an identity pol uh, uh, party, which is a Democratic party. Yeah, their DEI when, score when, is very high. When, uh, when Clyburn got behind Joe Biden South after, Carolina. after uh, uh, Bernie Sanders won the Nevada caucuses, yep. for a few days he was a front runner. They were scared to death. He's a self-described uh, 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 Democrat socialist, and they, they knew he couldn't win. Not so, controllable. So, so James Clyburn gets off the sideline on the eve of the South Carolina primary and endorses Biden. They all fell in line. He extracted a promise from Biden that his first nominee would be a black female. His vice president, black female. For a time, it looked like Dianne Feinstein might not finish out her term in California, and uh, Gavin Newsom publicly said, if she can't finish it out, I will nominate a black female. They're all about black. This is the year of the black female. Mm -hmm. And they got a black female now, next in line after Biden. If she's drop kicked for a white person, black women will be livid, and they will not vote they won't vote Republican. They just won't vote. Well, I think a, I think a lot of black people are gonna, black women are gonna be upset because right, right. I don't think Kamala's electable. But how will Trump pivot to the center and actually win the election? Because you just hit the nail on the head. As as old and decrepit as Joe Biden is, as, with all the lingering issues with with Trump, which I think are a lot of uh, the media and the Justice Department basically doing this, um, how will he pivot to the center and win over independent voters or even moderate Democrats? I think what he's going to do is not uh, 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 run with a female. I'm not, I'm not quite sure who it'll be, but Kim Reynolds maybe of Iowa or Christy Nome of South Dakota. Uh, but uh, or maybe even Carrie Lake, but it's so going to be it's going to be a female. You think that's that's how he's going to pivot? I can't, to the I can't think of anything else he gotcha. can do. I mean, we all know what he's about. Mm -hmm. What can he say now? He can't right. reinvent himself. He is who he is. He is what he is. So I think what he can do though is nominate a female. What about a strong black man like Larry Elder as the VP? It, it, Talk to me know, about I, that, Larry. I, I've told people if my phone rings and Trump's on the other end, I won't let it go to voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> I think your phone's ringing right now, Larry. Yeah. But, but but he's not going to do that. I, I that would not be the smart move. I, I can't bring California to him. Yeah, uh, I'm not in a swing state, and he doesn't need to have another man. He needs he needs to have a female. Uh, and, and Unfortunately, that's the way politics works. And Larry, not to go conspiracy theory because Adam loves when I I'm a coincidence. <laughs> theorist. you know when they say I'm not yeah, going to yeah, go here, they're, they're going awesome. right they're there. Yeah, it's like when he's a, going when right when there. They say it's not about the money. It's yeah. about it's the about money. The money. Like when money. a cop says, yeah. "There's nothing to see here." There's, There's definitely, definitely something to see. Here. I signed yes. a 300 million dollar contract for 10 years, but it's not about the money. Yeah. No. Oh no. No. But but Larry, because I mean, as you said, with the left. With 2016, with Hillary from weaponizing the FBI and everything is against Trump, Adam made a good point that he is obviously it's obvious he's, he's the front runner. Do you think the left has anything up their sleeves? I'm just saying in the sense that we keep getting warmed about pandemic tools coming from Fauci, mm -hmm. from from Biden. Everybody keeps saying, hey, they're warning us. They're testing right. out the, the, the new vaccine, this new variant to test. Do you think because, mind you, election year, Donald Trump is probably going down as one of the best statistic uh, policy presidents ever. All of a sudden, in election year, a couple months before, Larry, right. a virus comes out of a lab that we own, and they still have zero accountability because it's still it, it racist. Was, it, was, it wasn't just that. Also, 51 former intelligence officials signed a letter saying that the Hunter Biden laptop story had all the earmarks of Russian disinformation, two and a half year collusion thing, yeah. using COVID to change the rules in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. Yep. Uh, who knows what they're going to do? Exactly, that's but, what I was going to ask. But but they're going to do something. Some, something is up to uh, something right. is happening to keep because apparently the game plan of keeping Joe Biden up in the basement so, works. So here's my here's my question for you. You 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 don't sound optimistic. You said you're cautiously pessimistic, right? right? Uh, I'm I'm not sure if the voices of any party to be cautiously pessimistic encourage that party to want to go above and beyond. It's kind of like it's halftime. You're down three touchdowns, and a coach comes in and says, guys, I'm pessimistic. We're going to lose today. It's going to be a pretty bad loss, 
and uh, you're all going to be, you know, embarrassed at the end of it. It's going to be terrible. And then, boom, you know, Patriots come out from down 28-3 against the Falcons, and, and they the, win the Super the Bowl. The Jets won last night without, without well, Aaron yeah, Rodgers. But, 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 <laughs> but, what, but what, I'm saying, what I'm saying to you is, you know, to say cautiously pessimistic and to sound like everything is bad, everything is ugly, everything is this, everything is that, great. Well, what solution do you have for the rich Republicans of the right, for the Christian conservatives, for the libertarians that are also not happy about what's going on, about the business owners, about the guys that have the money? What what should be the well, solution long term? Well, that's why fight against that's it? why I am running. I am running because I, I'm an America first guy. I believe that taxes are too too high. Regulation is too much. Uh, we need to secure the borders. We need to get, need to get back to energy independence. Uh, I was a very happy camper when Donald Trump was uh, was president, and um, we need to work real hard to make sure if he's a nominee, he gets back in. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.